I am getting emotional making this video because I've been down this road and I am telling you if you are having I'm about to walk you through five symptoms of inferiority complex, their causes, and evidence-based tips on how to improve your self-esteem. At the core of an inferiority complex is a concern about how we compare to others. To an extent, being concerned about how we measure up in this way is normal and healthy. But when comparisons consistently pervade our thoughts, it may be symptomatic of chronic low self-esteem, the term psychologists use to refer to inferiority complex. Right here, right now, we're going to breeze through five symptoms of inferiority complex, their causes, and what we can do to improve our self-esteem. By the way, my name is Romani Nalko. I am the founder of the PEP, the People's Empowerment Platform, and you are watching another the episode of Advice from a Jackass. I've made all the mistakes for you and this channel allows me to share insights gained from those mistakes in hopes that it might make your life a little better. We cover everything from entrepreneurship to aren't you going to do some shit and everything in between. You know what I mean? All right, stop fronting and hit the subscribe button. Let's dive into five symptoms and causes of inferiority complex and please stick around to the end of the video because we are going to discuss research-based techniques that we can employ to improve our self esteems. Number one, a key symptom of inferiority complex is the compulsion to compare oneself against others unfavorably. Theodore Roosevelt once said, comparison is the thief of joy. And though this may be true, to not compare ourselves to others would be to live in a bubble, as comparison is a function of our society, our culture, and our institutions. Comparison is built into the school grading systems we are subject to as children. Similarly, they are a feature of our climb to personal and professional success as we compete to attain positions of status in our organizations. According to psychologists, to deny our pervasiveness to compare is not only to deny reality, but to deny our human instinct. This is because the urge to compare ourselves with others is rooted in our survival instinct known as self-other emergence. In the wild, this instinct helped our ancestors to identify strengths and weaknesses within a group and facilitate the allocations of essential tasks such as building a shelter or hunting. Unlike in earlier societies where people were likely to find their sense of identity and worth within a tribe or collective, individualism is a core tenant of today's Western societies. This means that rather than boosting collective strength, self-other comparisons end up harming individual self-worth. To the person with the inferiority complex, this means that they are constantly stumbling to find self-esteem by ranking themselves against others. This is a naturally losing game when in most situations there is always going to be someone in the world who was doing better than you. Number two, another sign of inferiority complex is the false sense of superiority. You know who I am? Do you know who I am? The person with an inferiority complex often feels forced to place what little self-worth they have in the few things that they can control. This can be with fancy cars, appearance, and other symbols of status and wealth. They may also feel the need to brag about these things and gain external validation to temporarily boost self-worth and make up for all the things beneath the surface that they can't control. You may have noticed in cases where an individual suffering from inferiority complex attains some level of success in a particular domain, this sense of superiority may evolve into what expert on personality disorders Professor Preston Nye refers to as acquired situational narcissism. Situational narcissism takes hold when someone who used to behave reasonably changes to become egocentric and boastful as a consequence of acquiring wealth, prestige, or status in a particular domain. Outwardly, this can manifest as a false sense of superiority. According to Professor Nye, however, these people still possess common human frailties such as self-doubt, insecurities, sense of inadequacy, perhaps even more than most as they work extra hard to maintain their false superficial exterior. This means the proud egotist in your life may be harboring an inferiority complex beneath the surface. Pop quiz, right now in the comments, I want you to tell me what percentage of the population do you think suffers from a low self-esteem in one form or another. If you are in the ballpark, if you get it right, you qualify to win a $50 Amazon gift card. Stick around to the end of the video. I'll let you know what the answer is. And if you haven't already, please like the video if you're finding good value here. Also, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thank you. Number three, another key symptom of inferiority complex is extreme sensitivity to criticism. Those who struggle with inferiority complex struggle to separate their output, for example, their performance, with their self-worth. As a result, upon receiving criticism, even if it's meant to be constructive for their work, those suffering from an inferiority complex are going to feel extremely wounded. You know people like this, and usually the source of sensitivity can be pinned down to their upbringing, their childhood, their relationship to their parents. Early caregivers can have an enormous 
enormous impact on whether an inferiority complex is exasperated or softened. According to Dr. James Maddox, psychologist and author of the book Subjective Well-Being and Life Satisfaction, a child with a highly critical parent who is always saying things like you're a klutz, you're a hardhead, you never do anything right, may internalize those admonishments so completely that they will take them well into their adulthood, making them highly sensitive to criticism. Even less overt but equally damaging is when a parent's expression of love or pride is conditional upon a child's high performance. Imagine a parent who observed their child's dedicated efforts training for a race. If the parent only approved of the child's efforts upon that child winning the race, but not for their hard work despite losing, that child would learn that love, pride, and approval are only available to them when they outperform others. I saw a lot of this when I lived in Texas because football, track, and field was the way to make it out, and parents weighed heavy on their kids to succeed in those games. Needless to say, this kind of conditioning will create a breeding ground for inferiority later in life and make receiving criticism, whether negative or constructive, seem intolerable. Number four, another symptom of inferiority complex is cycles of procrastination and perfectionism. I have suffered with this for at least two decades. One study in the Journal of Personality and Individual Differences found that dysfunctional procrastination behaviors can be predicted by low self-esteem. This is because someone with a low self-esteem suffering from inferiority complex, view their own value as being solely dictated by their ability to perform tasks better than others. Therefore, by avoiding task completion through procrastination, their self-esteem is never tested or wounded. Once the person with inferiority complex does eventually commence a task, they will attempt to mold themselves and the task that they are taking on into this impossibly idealized standard. Because the person with inferiority complex compulsively compares themselves unfavorably to others, they will usually set their standards of performance against the highest performing person they can find. Often this will be an expert whose performance they can't match realistically, yet they will try even if it means compulsively pursuing perfection to no end. Like before, this compulsion for perfection usually establishes its roots in early interactions with parental figures. According to psychologist Mark Hollander, perfectionism most commonly develops in an insecure child needing approval, acceptance, and attention from parents who are difficult to please. Number five, another hallmark of inferiority complex is to be extremely judgmental and critical of others. Those who have inferiority complexes will often find faults in other people and this can translate to bullying or putting people down in social situations. This is because other people's success represents a threat to the self-esteem of the inferior person. Imagine being a busy and successful actress or director, dating an actor who hasn't worked in years. That type of situation, that dynamic is going to trigger mental comparisons in the mind of a person with an inferiority complex. Rather than expressing joy or happiness for your success, the person with the inferiority complex is going to do one of two things. They'll either accept it as a sting to their self-worth because they themselves hadn't experienced that level of success in their careers, or they can deny the other person's career path is as great as they make it out to be and become judgmental or critical of them instead. The inferior person is sometimes happy to express their criticisms verbally as a way of discouraging the other person to share this kind of news again. Doing so enables them to safeguard their poor self-esteem from these types of interactions in the future. Given estimates that up to 85% of people may struggle with some form of low self-esteem, none of us should consider ourselves above this type of judgmental behavior when we are feeling low. While experiencing... Did you catch that? <laughs> Given estimates that up to 85% of people may struggle with some form of low self-esteem. If your answer to my pop quiz was 85%, you qualify to win a $50 Amazon gift card. I will announce the winner in my next video. Here are a couple tips recommended by psychologists to help us refine our self-esteem and overcome an inferiority complex. And by the way, if you haven't already, now would be a great time to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. If you really find value in the content, maybe you can share, hit the like button, give us a comment. Thank you in advance. It really helps the channel. First, many interventions to address inferiority complex target low self-esteem by using cognitive behavioral therapy techniques. This can include fixing negative self-talk. For instance, non-judgmentally observing your inner critic and questioning criticisms about yourself when they arise. This reminds me of something I used to do called thought inventory, where I'd be mindful of my negative thoughts versus my positive thoughts throughout the day. Therapists say it can also be helpful to practice self-compassion, such as reminding yourself that making mistakes and being imperfect is human nature. Another strategy recommended by therapists is to 
repeat positive affirmations each day, whether verbally or in writing. It serves as a way to replace the negative evaluations about yourself with positive ones. Another recommended strategy is to change the way we set goals. Rather than basing our ambitions on how we stack up to others, psychologists think it's more adaptive when you base your ambitions around your personal capabilities, your value systems, how you measure up to yourself. This is known as having a learning orientation and it has been shown to be linked to happiness and personal vitality. I ain't no therapist. I'm not even close. But if you ever take any advice from a jackass, please consider this. One of the things that really helped my self-esteem was letting go of the need to be judgmental of others. I learned the hard way that judgment is simply a double-edged sword. The way in which we view the world is very much the way in which we believe the world is viewing us. So when we lower our expectations of others and when we allow others to be as they are without criticism, we then begin to believe that the world views us in the same way. Look, if you think you may be suffering from an inferiority complex, remember to keep an eye out on how the ego and comparison show up in your social interactions. Rather than looking outside of yourself when setting goals, think about what you are capable of and what is going to make you genuinely happy without the influence of others. Being in my industry, you learn quickly that you cannot let society set the standards for your personal happiness. I am getting emotional making this video because I've been down this road and I am telling you if you are having a real difficult time dealing with your self-esteem, if you are suffering from an inferiority complex, professional help is a great way to go. It can really help give you insights to these beliefs that we often have that really have nothing to do with us. It's just a conditioning that came through our childhood and the environments that we were raised in. My name is Romney Malco. I am the founder of The Pep and this concludes another episode of Advice from a Jackass.